hi and welcome to my youtube channel um so we are going to do a little full body workout action um it's me and my partner jim kaufman i am not playing any music so you can hear me i will break things down and show a bunch of different variations and let's get going we're gonna start basically with a little warm-up so if you have a jump rope as you can see jim will be using the jump rope and i'm going to do it without it so if you don't have a jump rope no attachment at all just find a little spot in your place and start with the little jumps. You can add the arm movement as well, even though if you don't have it, imagine you do. Neve doesn't understand. Oh, let's do right. that for a minute. That maybe little bully gets a little scared. Oh, I shall move. This is go get it, Cara. Oh, let's do this for about a minute. Maybe try with one leg, another jump. Switch. Okay. <laughs> but because you're, you're hitting the I roof know, as well, that's what it's. Yeah. Just to get a little bit of a warm up, heart rate going. Alternate one, two. <laughs> I can't. It's, I'm hitting it's everything. Dwindling. I'm hitting everything. Try it without it. All, All right. right. So a little jumping. Let's say last 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Pause, take a deep breath in, and let it out. In and out. At any moment, if you need to use the bathroom or have some water, you're free to do so. Let's move right now into a plank variations. So we're gonna start in the plank position. Palms right beneath the shoulders. And from here, if this is too challenging, feel free to place your knees down on the ground. And just do it from a modified variation. From plank position, make sure you're not sinking down. Protract the shoulder blades, push the floor away. Push, lift the navel up towards the back body. Press with the thumb and the index finger down. Continue to lengthen through the crown of the head forward as you reach back through your heels. Roll the inner thighs up towards the sky. And let's hold it here for about a minute. If that's too much, please place your knees down. Long and deep inhales and exhales. Deepening the breath. And building up some fire at the center, the core of the body. And again, just notice some days you'll be more wired up, you'll have more energy. Some days you're more lethargic, dull, tired. Honor your body. If it's too much, take a break. Don't get annoyed and don't over push your body. But again, keep in mind that your body can go a little bit further. It's the mind that usually gets tired and bored and then we give up. Now from here, we're going to add a little bit of movement into the legs. Keep the palms pushing the floor away, and we're going to start to move the legs. Jump out, in, out, in. Now notice my hips. Often what happens when we jump in and out, the hips collapse too low. So don't let ever your hips sink below your shoulders. Keep the hips high, so keep that core tight. Scoop and keep lifting the navel up towards the back body. And let's do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, and one. Take a little break. Place your knees down. Take a little child's pose if you need to. If you want to go a little bit further, maybe play with jumping your feet forward and back. Forward and back. Again, it doesn't have to be far. It could be right here. A little bit closer to your hands and back. Closer to your hand and back. You'll be surprised what a good cardio this can be. Keep moving last time. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Next time you're in plank, place your knees down and let's find child's pose. If you're working out with your partner, you can give them a nice little sweet adjustment. Make sure that they have healthy knees. And again, if they feel any pressure in your knees, do not put any deep pressure onto the hips. Gently maybe use your knees 
to support the hips. And then just ride your fingers along the spine, lengthening the back. Try to here fill up the back of the ribcage with the breath. Keep lengthening the in and the out breath. Soften, relax the elbows. Make it a restorative child's pose, or an active one. And let's take five deep inhales and exhales here before we move into the next plank variation. Maybe have your partner walk the hands all the way to the right, lengthening and breathing through the left side of the wrist, releasing the left side of the sacrum. And then switch to the other side. And back to the center. And back to plank position. We're going to make it a little bit more fun right now. So again, if plank is not exactly accessible, please keep your knees down. If you have any issues with your wrist, you can skip it all together or just do it from a four plank. You can do all the little jumps with the legs as well from a forearm position, going a little bit in and out, same thing. Now back to plank. <laughs> We're gonna front plank position here. I'm gonna try to take your hand. The right one, count the feet a little bit wider will actually help you, makes it a tiny bit easier. And try to see with the right hand if you can tap a little bit in front and then bring it back. Left one forward and back. Now notice what often happens, the hips shift to the side as you move. Can you keep the hips static? So if you have a block, place it right on top of the sacrum so the core and the center is completely static and you're just moving the hand forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, you can do it from your knees. One and two and just modify it if needed making it a little bit challenging. You're gonna walk your hands as far out as you can and then back in. So maybe it's just one step and back. If you can go further, up and then back in. Further out, <laughs> walk it back in. Further out, every time you start from plank, initiate the first movement with an opposite arm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's keep going. And last three. Take breaks. Honor your body just like anything else. You'll build up to it. I'm going to soon be surfing on my own sweat. I have to add the yogi to Great job. Let's move into the last two. your knees down, take a deep breath in, and let it out, in, and maybe lion's breath, stick, stick the tongue out, feeling well rested, let's move on, we're going to add a couple of chaturangas or push-ups, and again, I'll show different variations, you can do a regular one, again, make sure you can keep your knees down, and once you're doing the chataranga, as you shift the weight forward, start to bend the elbows and keep hugging the elbows in towards the side body. Maybe you bend a tiny bit, push back up. Maybe you bend a little tiny bit and back up. If you're feeling strong, come halfway down, back up. If you wanna go a little bit further, maybe let the chest touch the ground, push back up and keep the knees down the whole time if needed. You'll build up to it. If you can and you're feeling strong, you're gonna approach it from a plank position. So front plank, shoulders right over the wrist, shift the weight forward, bend a little bit, back up. If you can go a little bit further, bend a little bit more, back up, then bend a little bit more, maybe tap, back up, back up. I think I'm going to have to cover something over the phone because it's going to heat up. Last three. 
sure? No. Ah, yeah. next time you bring it up, just lie down on your belly. Let me quickly do that, or we lose my phone. Last time it did that, it overheated. Is it in shade? Yeah, it looks yeah. good. Yeah, because the sun is right over it, and I really hop. Sorry, guys. Perfection. Oh, yeah. The block is. Here's my yogi toe. Well, if you guys an excuse for everyone to take a little break. Should have thought about this sooner. Here we are. Hey, my palms are really bruised. Oh, I'm sorry. Skip the stuff that it's hurting your arms. Sorry. Now that we're in the belly, you're gonna start with the little back strengtheners and exercises. You're gonna place your hands, slide them a little bit back as if you're gonna do a little cobra. You can keep the palms down. From here, lift a little bit and slowly down. Inhale, rise and slowly down. Use your breath. Maybe on alternate, interlace the fingers behind you, do the same thing. Reach back and up and down. Maybe switch the interlace. You can again just reach the hands back, and if you can't interlace, just use a strap. Or just reach the hands back, turn the thumbs up. And give me a few more things. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gonna always add a little blanket for your pubic bone if you're feeling any pain or harshness. And release. Take a little break, maybe make a puma with your hands and rest your forehead. out with a partner just add a little bit release on the pelvis in here take one leg pull it back and then add a little shift it a tiny bit harder in here we're gonna extend the arms forward and now from here I'm gonna start on the ground and use this for my pubic bone support so hands forward karate chop the earth and then draw the hands in keep pulling the chest forward keep finding length and space press the pubic bone into the ground lengthen the lower back and from here maybe stretch the right hand a little bit and then switch to the left Lower it down, right, release, left, release. Maybe on the next one, right up and the opposite leg, the left. Stretch your back so much it flows off the ground. Breathe for three, two, one, release and switch. Left arm up, stretch the right leg back so much it flows off the ground for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly release it down, rest the forehead. And again, take a few deep inhales and exhales. Moving on right now, you're going to do both. Slide the hands in, float both hands off the ground. Stretch your legs back so much they float off the ground. And now 10 times, let's grab the feet and the hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Turn and great job. Release it down. 
maybe slide back into a little child's pose for a few deep inhales and exhales. Maybe on this round, you can help your partner by just sliding your fingers down the neck to just remind them to relax, releasing the tension. Often as we work out, we end up gripping with the jaw, tensing the parts of the body that shouldn't be working. So rather squeeze those abs, fire up the glutes rather than holding up the tension in the jaw or in the facial muscles, forehead or eyebrows. Let's move right now into doing a little plank contraction. You can use the TRX if you have it. If you don't have the TRX, you can just do it on the ground using a blanket or any, anything that you can slide in and out. This will work in here. Or again, just hold the plank if that's all too much. You can just place the feet on anything slippery. And you can just slide in, slide out, slide in slide up and I'll do this one right now you use the TRX and then you can switch on the side now another thing here if you have anything going on with the wrist please put your elbows out modified by placing the elbows out and you can do it like that from a forearm plank and I'll do my sessions here one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's mine. That's mine. Get it, Nini. Get it. <laughs> and you can do a little arm workout in here, pulling with the bulldog. <laughs> All right. From here, we're gonna move into legs. I guess I'll do one more set with the TRX. Take a break, do one more round, or use a little blanket, or if you're at home and you have like a wooden floors, it's a great way actually just to slide your feet like this in and out. Just slide in and slide out. Have a little bit of water, or add one more round. I'm gonna do few here. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and why not ten more? Last one, two. Again, keep in mind if you can't get the hips high, just squeeze the knees and like this. Two. And start here. Release it. Again, a little break in child's pose. And then we're gonna move into a little light action to warm up the hips. So I'm gonna demonstrate with the TRX one set. Then we're gonna use a little bit of weight if you have it. start here by just demonstrating it basically without weight without using anything and use a block or a gun uh, you can probably when you're 15 or 20 up to you but this is what we're doing sliding a little bit as we're skiing use a chair in front of you if you need to and maybe take the right leg to the back tap and then come up tap and then come up tap and come up and then of course we're gonna do the other side up and up, up and as you can see don't collapse forward as you do that when you take the leg to the side make sure the chest stays upright and back up and up now i'm going to use the trx and then the second step i will do it with weight 
So if you have straps, or if you have a belt that you can loop around something, it will actually help you keep that chest upright. So from here, keep the left leg neutral, and let's take the right leg back. Now again, you don't have to touch the ground. You can just step it as far as you can comfortably to the side. switch to the other side. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Take a little break, connect with the breath, and again, take a rest for as long as you need to. You can always pause, and then continue when you're ready. Let's move to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Adding the kick if you have it. Doesn't have to be high kick, it'll be here. Bend the knee to the side. Good. Good. No. Okay. And again, you can hold it and just fold a little bit here to create length and space. You want to do it stretch a little bit. Walk back and then lengthen the chest forward. Step your feet a little bit wider if you're tighter so you can actually stretch the legs through. work maybe engage one leg a little bit more push it straighter straighter breathe through the back of the leg and then switch allow it to micro bend and focus on your opposite a little cool. and now you're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna use the weight you're gonna use the TRX and again you can do it without it just do one more step I want to just fire up the hips a little bit more on the legs before we do the pigeon and we'll break it down with the chair and then do it on the ground Come on. from here let's get going kick as well if you're comfortable doing it with weight <laughs> otherwise if you have a little bigger weight like i'm having right now you can get a little challenging last six five four <laughs> three two one take a little break if you need to i'll move immediately to the other side Last time. One, two. We can add 
dikit Awesome, but they're very inconvenient the size of them. But they're definitely cumbersome. Yeah. All right. Now we're gonna move to a lot of hip openers. Navigations using a chuck. It's okay, Angel. I'm gonna sit you right here. Okay. So you're gonna sit on the chair. We kind of be a little bit more at the other side. You're gonna take the right ankle and cross it on top of the left hand. From here, many of you will already start to feel a little sensations. As soon as you do this seated, you'll start to feel a little sensations on the outer hip. If you're very tight, your knee will creep up. Don't put pressure on your knee. Rather, put your thumb and the fingers on the crease and lengthen it down. And do that a few deep inhales and exhales, in and up. Yeah. Another little approach. You can do it as well standing like this cross and reach the hands towards the table or the chair and lengthen, lengthen. And I'll show the advanced variations after this. Right, Jim in here. Now you're going to reach your arms up towards the sky. Keep breathing and lengthening. Take a little sip. I'm talking too much. Up. If you have a partner, you're going to grab their hands, lift them up, 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 and I'm going to say the next one sideways, and have them lengthen down towards the block. If it's too far, you're going to have a higher elevation, and you will feel a little tighter after the heat that we created a second ago. Keep lengthening forward. Relax the trapezius. Relax the jaw. Soften. Slowly from here, come up. You're gonna try to hook the right elbow on the outside of the foot. So just from where you're at, hook the elbow on the outside, or just put the hand like this for the twist. With the left hand, try to grab the back of the chair. Perfect. And then roll the left shoulder head open. Beautiful. And twist. Inhale, lengthen space. Exhale as you revolve a little bit more. Beautiful. Up, go inhale, lengthen space. And revolve a little bit. One more here. And let it out. Back to the center. Release the right leg down. And take a breath in here. Just observe one side and the other. And Angel, I'm going to have you stand up for a second and demonstrate the next one sideways. So right now, we're going to sit here facing that direction. We have the right leg on. Now we're going to put the left ankle across the right thigh. Start here. Just seated. Lift the heart up. And keep initiating the rotation in your hip joint. So lengthen down, down external rotation. The more you root the pubic bone down, because often what happens, you collapse under. Lengthen, release the pubic bone and the tailbone equally down towards the chair. And then stretch the arms up, lengthen, find space. So see how much you can lengthen, grow, 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 up, up. And then from that place, start to fold forward any amount you can. I'm super tight. I know, that's Just for the viewers at home <laughs> that don't know. You're doing amazing, love. way tighter. Few here. Use your breath to create space. And again, if you're very tight, notice often we work out and pump the muscle for a long time, but we don't give it enough time to stretch and lengthen. And again, lengthening the muscle will do the same thing as contracting it, except that the muscle teaches how to hug onto the bone. So you'll definitely fire up the muscle as well. Now from here, back up and add left hand on the outside or the elbow. With the right hand, grab the back of the chair. That's it. Use it to open the shoulder head up and back. Don't use force, use the breath to create space and to move it. Lengthen space, inhale, exhale, twist. Inhale, lengthen space, exhale, twist. 
I'm back. You just have to be on You can take a little break. If you want to have water, I'm going to demonstrate how you can take it into two little advanced poses in a yoga practice, Ashtanga or not, either way. Little arm balances after you open up the hip. And then we're going to continue with a little bit more action for legs and pick the triceps before we wrap. So from here, I'm going to take my shoes off from a yoga madness. So if you cross the right ankle on top of the left, stretch the hands forward, forward, forward. If you can, bring the palms down to the ground. If you need to, you can elevate them onto the blocks. Now make sure that your right knee is squeezed deep into the right armpit and your left foot is hooking around your left armpit and you'll see it on the other side. Draw the chest forward, sink a little bit, but keep scooping the navel up towards the back body. And then from here, maybe add a little scoop, hop, hop, or if you're comfortable, Try to extend the leg all the way back for a few deep inhales and exhales, or just for a brief second. And then you're gonna transition to the other side. So doing the left side, same thing, lengthen. Release the palm down, hook the left elbow into the left armpit, and wrap your toes around. So wait a bit grip around it. Draw the chest forward, lift the navel up towards the back body, maybe scoop the right heel a little bit in, and maybe extend the leg back as well for a few here. And again, if you want to take the twist that we did as well with the chair a little bit further, you're going to hook the left elbow on the outside or hook it all the way towards the armpit for the grasshopper. Place your hands down, draw the chest forward, and again, see if you can float the left leg up. Oh, yeah. But again, for the grasshopper, your hips gonna be a little bit more open, so be careful with that approach. Did the right leg, let's do the, the right now. Hook it on the outside, and it's a great way to practice if you're sitting on the chair, to try to release the right hand as much down to get the foot as high up. And that's a little bit of yoga monkey's business. Let's keep moving right now. So we're gonna come into downward dog for the next little action. Um, if you have smaller weights that you want to use, you'll keep them handy. If you can or if you have any issues with the wrist, you're gonna use a little, if you have an elevation, or please skip it all together, this next one. Or palms can go onto the block. We'll just do 10 on each side. So, from downward dog. It doesn't matter if your legs get straight or not. Float one leg up. And again, it doesn't matter how high it could be here. It doesn't matter how much you lift. You're gonna just practice with the left leg. Hop forward, hop back. Great way to get a little inversion. This is more than enough. Stick to just doing this. If this gets easier and you can get actually the foot a little bit closer towards your hands, and back, closer, and back, closer, and back. Again, if you wanna add more, Hop closer from here. Maybe just try to add a little clap. You can even skip the jumping and just from here, play doing this. Or if you wanna go further, once you jump it forward, you're grabbing the weight. Or again, without the weight, just come all the way up. And then bring it all the way down. Hands back and jump back. And let's do 10 of these. Forward, all the way up. And slowly back. <laughs> now you can tap the ground anytime if you're feeling dizzy just do less of a movement maybe just come from here up 
and slowly come down. Come up and slowly down. So modified if needed. Last three on this leg. Tip down, just place the right leg down. You can use the block in here to elevate the fingertips for a little hamstring stretch and draw the chest forward. You can use the chair in here for your hands. And then just lengthen forward, keep lengthening. So now it's awesome to fall like this into the back. Leg. Draw the chest forward, shift the weight forward into the ball of that left leg. So starting to elevate the hands and shift forward and actually having the hands down and being completely collapsed in the chest. Two deep inhales and exhales here, five. Four. Three. Two. And one. Slowly. Step the right leg forward, come up to standing, or again, just to seal it for a few deep inhales and exhales, especially if you're not used to doing longer inversions and having too much fresh blood in the brain. We're gonna kick the other side. So whenever you're ready, don't rush into it just because I'm moving. Come into downward facing dog. Uneven surface, but this is making it a little bit more challenging. Left leg up. Again, little hops forward and back, little hop and back, hop and back, hop and back. As that gets easier, maybe you hop a little further and back, and back, and then if you want forward, adding a little clapping, or if you want to add the full movement up, and then slowly down and hop it back, up, all the way up, up, two, three, four, over my own hair. Should have had it in a complete pony. And last one. We're gonna step the left foot back two to three feet apart. Right leg back. Elevate the hands again if you need to or use the chair. And a couple of deep inhales and exhales here. Five. Four. Three, each inhale, lengthen the spine. Each exhale, maybe push the leg a little bit straighter. Push the quad back towards the hamstring. Keep the sacrum neutral. And one, gently step it forward and roll up to standing. Oh my gosh, one vertebra at a time. 
You know, I can go forever. Let me see the time. Think almost that last exercise. That's it. Let's kick the tricep right now for the last little kick. Jim will demonstrate in here. You have the bands or those sun bands that you can use. You're gonna turn around from here. It makes it easier if you wanna step one leg forward and then alternate with the other or both feet parallel. Again, don't move the whole chest forward. Keep the upper arms in the alignment with your ears. Lean forward so you feel resistance. And then from that place, try to stretch from the forearms. It's too hard for me here. And back. Stretch. And back. Keep the core tight. And the legs are much better. Come on. Oh, if you don't have that, you can just use a chair or a sofa. You're gonna place like this your elbows to the edge, walk a little bit further out, and then bend the elbows backward. One, two, three. If you wanna make it harder, add a little bit weight on the hips. Or if you have a child, have them sit right there. Fire up the work a little bit more. You can alternate with lifting one leg up. Other side, stand in here. One, two, three. Again, bend the elbows, initiate the movement from the elbows, and notice you might not be able to go too low. That's perfectly okay. Five, six, five, four, three, two, one, and that will be it for the tricep. Again, if you have the chair here, you can use it as a little stretch in here. Just place the elbows like this at the edge. You can keep the palms together, but not usually our shoulders are much tighter. So if you have a block or something to keep your palms actually shoulder width apart, that would be ideal. Placing the elbows at the edge and then melt down. little rotation for the shoulders and then a friend's I'm putting in Shavasana and I'm gonna make up for all this but I'm gonna turn off the phone so grab your the strap there. grab in the strap or a belt go as wide as you need to you're just gonna circle your arms all the way up and back and then forward up and back doesn't matter how far back you go even if it's just here I'm back And this is a great one to do even while you're watching TV to open up the shoulders and create some space. Thank you for joining. And that's it. And you can do the line Shavasana.